Welcome back, Top 5 Scary Family. Mind-bending movies are always a treat. Either it has this deeper meaning or it has layers deeper than it was advertised, or the ending is just a massive twist that makes you want to rewatch the movie immediately out of, you know, anger or I kind of liked it. So for today's list, I'll be breaking down our top five mind-bending horror movies. Oh, what's going on? What? Is it real? Is it a dream? Spoilers included, of course. I'm Taylor McWatters. Let's get into it. But before we get to our list today, guys, we have a quick message from our sponsor, Rage Shadow Legends. Right off the bat, the cutscenes, the voice acting, the fact that this game is free, I mean, this just blows my mind. You can play anywhere, anytime, with Raid Shadow Legends being available on both mobile and PC. There are 13 powerful factions, so you can build champions from all of them. Whatever you want, Raid's got something for everybody. And on top of that, you have an awesome story campaign that is fully voiced, spanning to 12 unique locations with three difficulties to complete it on. Now, there's 500 champions to collect. Guys, 500. Each of them are totally unique with their own design, skill set, and strengths. I mean, look at this badass champion. They're just giving away. Guys, you can't beat that. You can find me in-game under the name McWaters94, and if you're quick enough, you can even join my clan. So what are you waiting for? So what's new in Raid? Well, Raid just released the Artifact Forge, where you can save time and craft artifacts directly as well as a whole new advanced quest system with amazing rewards. And that's not all. They also brought out some amazing new champions, and they're developing the amazing looking Doom Tower as we speak, which I am super pumped about. So go to the video description, click on the special links, and if you are a new player, you will get 200,000 silver plus one free champion, Tree Feller. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here. So good luck and I'll see you there. Kicking off the list with number five, we have The Lighthouse. Released in 2019, brought to us by the same guy who gifted us The Witch back in 2015, Robert Eggers. The Lighthouse is black and white. It's the slow burn that is presented in one by 1.19 dimensions. It's like a square. It feels like you're watching through old school Instagram posts. Remember when it was like a square and you're like, I gotta squeeze my whole body in, let's do it. It feels like you're watching this movie through the peak hole of a door. It's amazing. Then you have this blazing foghorn that just layers in the back of the movie for almost the entire hour and 49 minute runtime. It leaves you feeling insane. It sounds and looks like a late 1800s style movie. It's shot so well that you don't really get used to it. Especially in the time now where we have like 3D movies with moving chairs and like IMAX. This is new, it's fun, and it's creepy. There are these long shots of the two of them just standing there and staring at you. It feels like you're watching an old school photo being taken back when, you know, back when cameras were the size of mailboxes and it took like 10 minutes to do it. Like one of the opening shots, they're just standing there and just staring at the camera and they just start walking again. It's really weird. Robert Pattinson plays Winslow, who is under the supervision of Willem Dafoe's character, Thomas Wake. He's got this thick beard and a dirty pipe. He gets into it. He's great. And it really gets intimidating, I'm not gonna lie. He, Willem Dafoe, is so intimidating as an actor. He's so good. Like, I left the theater and I felt like I was mad. There's only two speaking characters the entire time. They meet each other, they get to work, they drink, they talk, they dance, they fight a little bit. And then on top of all of these wild emotional changes, we have some lore behind the actual lighthouse. So even if you didn't enjoy The Witch, give this movie a go. It feels like you're watching theater. The monologues are captivating. Number four, Jacob's Ladder. Directed by Adrian Lyons, starring Tim Robbins, this 1990 thriller was way ahead of its time. It's about this Vietnam veteran who has these horrible hallucinations and he's not sure if he's literally in hell or this is just PTSD from army experiments. And at the same time, we see Jacob and his crazy relationship problems unfold. I mean, his life is a literal roller coaster, and while you're watching it, the whole time you feel so stressed out for him. Like you want him to be okay, or you kind of don't want him to be okay. As long as we pick one lane and keep moving, we're happy. But that's where this movie settles, that gray area between I'm not sure what's going on, I'm kind of confused with the plot, to oh, we're not supposed to know what's going on. I get it. I like it. It's just this back and forth and it's brilliant. Jason Alexander is in this movie. He's a supporting character and he plays Jacob's attorney. And for the shady army conspiracy plot that they're pushing in the movie as well. Many viewers gave this movie for being messy and confusing and incoherent, but that's what makes it stand out as its own. That's why we're putting it in this list. Also, a lot of people look at Macaulay Culkin as the Home Alone kid, you know, and how great and cute he is, whatever, he's funny, he does the thing, he's awesome. 
This movie, he's like an actor. He's just a young, good actor. He's not like the cute kid. It's amazing. This movie as a whole is just a mind Give it a go if you haven't right after this video ends, like immediately. Good luck, you'll need it. Number three, as above, so below. Okay, this one snuck past a lot of people. It's a hidden gem. It was released back in 2014, starring Perdita Weeks and Ben Feldman, and it was directed by the lovely John Eric Dowdle. We have this group of explorers that are searching the depths of the Paris catacombs for the Philosopher's Stone. Yeah, this is like some Harry Potter stuff, except it's crazy. It's one of those movies where you have to Google the ending in a good way. It's not like, oh, that was stupid. What the, like, what I miss? I was curious what others thought about this plot because it's advertised like an exploration gone wrong almost. We have the POV shaky cam, some flashlights you gotta smack a few times, the one guy who doesn't want to do anything or have anything to do with this group but still ends up doing everything with the group. It's got all the common horror tropes and it looks like a cheesy movie with like a low budget. Like I watched the trailer and I was like, Cool, I could just make this movie myself, next. And the combination makes for a pretty exciting hour and a half movie, I'm not gonna lie. Each character has this hidden past that has to be uncovered in order to like move on with the plot. So you're not quite sure what's gonna happen next or which hellish theme you'll be getting along the way. And when I say hellish theme, I literally mean hell. This movie is based off the nine stages of hell, which is a breath of fresh air compared to your usual, you know, Hey, let's go in the woods and make out. Stab. I mean, the themes of the devil aren't new. Like, of course, we've seen possession, like curses. Those are all great. But hell, as this living, breathing, haunted house style entity that you have to escape, it's pretty solid. It's pretty new. We don't see that enough. If you haven't seen it, slash when you do watch it, let me know your thoughts about the ending, because it's up for debate online, and people think that it's a different ending than what we saw. And there's some pretty compelling evidence for some of these theories, so let me know down below, because I'm curious. Number two, The Sixth Sense. The Sixth Sense, okay, if you're watching this and you haven't seen The Sixth Sense, spoilers coming in hot, okay? Like, you're gonna hear some things that you might not want to know. Shame on you, though. This movie came out when I was five years old. Look at me, I'm like 6'2". That's this is how much time you've missed. You could have watched Sixth Sense in all this time. Released in 1999, directed and written, of course, by the twist ending king himself, M. Night Shyamalan. Starring Bruce Willis and Haley Joel Osment, very young Haley Joel Osment, this movie cleaned up. It did so well. It earned itself six Oscar nominations, including Haley Joel Osment. He's great. Now, before this point in his career, M. Night Shyamalan had only done Stuart Little and a couple other less popular projects. So to go from the new kid on the block to one of the best horror film directors and writers to this day, we have to talk about where it started. So Bruce Willis plays a child psychiatrist who is side by side now with Cole, Haley Joel Osment's character, who can see dead people in his everyday life. It's great, it's amazing acting, it's a great horror film, the concept is wild, but underneath this spooky music and dark, beautiful, eerie shots, this movie is a drama. It is a soul-searching, have a little faith in me, what is my purpose in life type drama. So after the reveal, the movie is very disturbing. There are a few key scenes that live rent-free in my head from growing up, and one of them has to do with a red balloon. It just scares me to talk about. I don't know, it's anxious, it's done very well. I was so young, and this movie me up. Before I was even old enough to fully appreciate the plot, it was scary, so it's perfect. It looks scary, it is scary. Bruce Willis, you're scary. And finally, number one, Bandersnatch. Okay, choose your own adventure books were always a good time growing up. And then now with Netflix just murdering the game with all their original shows and specials, it was only a matter of time to see the choose your own horror adventure come to that platform. And it's a wild time. There are five main endings to this Black Mirror interactive episode. So usually when a movie comes out, you ask, hey, what did you think of the ending? Not, hey, what ending did you get? Released on Netflix in 2018, directed by David Slade, this Black Mirror special episode lets you call the shots. And for fans of the Black Mirror show, we knew we weren't walking into something, you know, soothing per se. Black Mirror episodes already leave us feeling uneasy. It's usually a plot driven by technological advancements to a point where humans break themselves. They use this new cool tech and then it opens up this new problem humans have never had to think about before, like being raided by strangers. So Bandersnatch made our palms sweaty right from the get-go. It starts off fun and new, it even gets so specific as to what type of cereal our guy Stefan eats at the beginning. Nice way to get us into how it works, you know, I got you, you go, oh, we have to pick, huh, and then you see it and you're like, what? 
It's great, it's a nice fun transition. With over 250 individual segments that can be used in any order, making it a unique experience for you. I'm not gonna give away any of the plot details, but I went through and watched this movie five times now since it came out, and it's super trippy and it's a treat every single time. Because you get into it, right? The cast is amazing, it's great acting and directing. Will Poulter, Finn Whitehead, they draw you in with these spectacular performances, and then the screen zooms out and it's like, hey, how should our guy start his day? What kind of music should he listen to? And you're like, uh, I don't know. I forgot that I had to do this. Then you click it and the music plays for the next part of the movie. So you feel kind of like a director all of a sudden. You can't help but feel so immersed as a person. I couldn't imagine making this movie. This hurts your brain and all you have to do is like flip a coin and pick one or two options. That's it. It's smart. You honestly feel like you're in charge of this plot and it's so stressful when it really gets going. I feel like this episode popped for like a week and then nobody talked about it ever again because it was almost too personal. It was hard to talk about because you wanted everybody to have their own individual unique experience with it. Like if you got a messed up ending, you couldn't talk to anybody about it. That was like your own thing. You're like, oh, that was crazy. Like, I wonder if they got that same crazy night that I had because they may have watched an entirely different movie perhaps. And you can't spoil it either. Like what a weird conversation to have. How was your movie? It was pretty scary. How was yours? Eh, it was okay, didn't last too long. What? My brain hurts, I'm out of here, let's call it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Which of these movies melted your brain when you first saw it? Let us know in the comments down below so we can watch them this weekend and get going. You guys are the best. Until next time, I'm Taylor McWaters. Wear a mask, stay safe, peace.